just wanted to put together a quick video, sort of a, a buyer's guide of the uh, Rolex GMT Master 1675. Uh, this is a 1978 example. As before with my other video, you know, this is not an exhaustive guide uh, for people. This is just a kind of a, a things to look for. It's not for experts. It's really just for the kind of the novice collector. Um, some of the stuff you kind of want to look out for. So yeah, this watch is actually a, a 78, 1978 example. Uh, it has actually been recently been serviced by Rolex, as you can see on the guarantee card. The serial starts with a, a 5 million, so dates it to basically roughly 1978. Um, and yeah, first thing we want to look at really, I suppose, is the dial. And uh, dial is in good condition, as you can see. Um, make sure the dial hasn't been relumed. Um, make sure it's not a service dial. Uh, condition is very important. So you need to kind of really need to use a, a jeweler's loop to look at these dials because you want to make sure there's no damage on the dial because that will affect the price. As said before, quite often these watches have been in the hands of um, watchmakers that have perhaps been a bit, a little bit clumsy at times with them and I've seen quite a few of these watches that have surface marks, scratches on them. Uh, this one is in pretty much perfect condition. Uh, so that's that's something important to look for and again you quite often see sometimes around the edges of the dial here where it sort of meets the case uh, that there may be some sort of chipping or scratching and, and, and that will affect the, the price of the watch a little bit. Uh, so that's something important. Secondly the hands these are correct hands uh, which were original to the watch uh, made of tritium so they match the dial very nicely that's something that's really really important um, often these hands were changed to uh, Luminova uh, replacement units by Rolex and they would glow in the dark still and they will probably not match the dial as well so something important to look for uh, as this is a date function watch uh, another thing you want to look out for is the date wheel of the date indicator this is a, a an original one from the period. It's basically a, the finish is kind of like a silvery flecked, uh, metally finish. If it's been replaced by Rolex, the, re the replacement units are just basically like the modern ones. They're just like a plain, they're just white, a flat white color with the the numbers on there. Uh, so this will, this is actually an original one. It's a, a silver sort of a finish, as you can see there. Um, so that's again something that's desirable. Not it doesn't have to be that way, but you know if you want to keep it as original as possible, these are just the basic things to look for. So dial in good condition, hands original to the dial, uh, original date indicator, and something that's really key with these watches as well as these bezel inserts. This is an original, uh, an original to the watch when I bought it. It's a 1970s uh, bezel insert. It's actually faded on the bottom half. It should be a crimson red. It's kind of turned into a pinkish color. Uh, which is nice. I kind of like them when they're faded. I don't like them when they're in perfect condition. It sort of matches the overall look of the watch. Um, there's a lot of poor condition ones out there. It depends on what your preferences are, but I don't like them when they're really heavily scratched or they've got sort of almost bleached kind of staining on them. Also, the service replacements, some people have been antiquing them. They've been acid washing them. Um, you can usually tell because it's not it's it's kind of an even fading. That's not always the case, but um, you know uh, you can look out for them. I I've, I can spot them quite well um, when they've been antiqued. You see it with vintage Submariners as well. These have fatter fonts as well on the uh, numbers than the, the service replacements. So that's something that's really important because it's such a key feature of this watch is that is the actual insert and the you know it's a very very classic part of the design. So. Also, if you actually take this bezel insert off, on the back it would be red, as this one is. Um, it has a red finish to the back of it. On the later service replacements, it's basically a blue colour, um, sort of like roughly 1980 onwards, I think. Um, so you can tell if they're service replacements or if they're original 70s items, which this one is. So yeah, dial hands, date indicator, bezel insert, all very important. Again, with vintage Rolex watches, something that's really, really important is the finish of the case, or the you know make sure it hasn't been over polished. This has been polished by Rolex, but in very good condition. Um, it's got the chamfers, which I really like. Um, make sure it's nice and even as well, because again, as, as said before in my other review, if a watch has been knocked in a particular place at some point, which often they have, then a you know somebody polishing the case may have had to over polish a particular lug. So you want to make sure it's kind of evenish. And also, again, one of the number one kind of tests really is, or sort of visual tests, is 
do the spring bars sit below the case? If they're protruding, the case has been over polished or possibly has the, an incorrect spring bar in sometimes. But if it's a correct Rolex spring bar, it should sit below the case. So that's something immediately to look out for. Um, and this one is in, yeah, I had it polished once and I've never had it polished again and don't intend to. So that's really, really good. This has an original Rolex bracelet. It is uh, reference 78360. Um, it's not original to the year of the watch. Um, this would have had possibly a riveted bracelet on it um, or a folded version. Um, this is a solid construction. The other model, one of the other numbers is a, a reference 7836. If you can find one in good condition, it's great. Um, not easy to find as they stretch a lot if they've been worn, especially if they've been worn loose as well on the wrist, they would stretch. So this has been replaced by a Rolex, but uh, in very nice condition, obviously, because it's not very old. Um, and it doesn't really bother me. I like to have a nice kind of secure bracelet on the wrist. Um, and I, I'm, I'm more concerned about the condition of the kind of the watch head itself and the case and the dial and things. So, uh, yeah, that's something. It goes without saying that you need to take off the bracelet. You need to see the serial number. It needs to be fully intact. Otherwise, you can't tell what year the watch is. Um, if it's been rubbed off uh, completely, obviously. And then if you can't tell the year of the watch, you can't tell which is the correct dial for the watch. And with these GMTs, um, quite often on some of the 70s ones, the difference really in the dial, a lot of it is in the type of the, the style of the coronet, the Rolex crown and the wording at the top here would kind of tell you whether it's an early 70s dial or a later 70s dial. Um, that's something to look out for. Um, I've said before, you know, a good, a good resource to get used to dial variations is a, a dealer in um, San Francisco called HQ Milton. They have some of the watches they've sold before online. I've used them loads of times to sort of learn about different dial variations. Um, so look through their database and you can familiarize yourself. Also, there's, you know, there's lots of other online resources to work out which dial is correct for which year. Um, so, yeah, you really want to do that get get the right dial you know for the right year all of all of these things condition wise original parts will affect the price of the watch uh, and if you overpay for a watch because it hasn't got the correct parts then obviously that's not a good thing so just to recap original dial original hands matching hands a date indicator nice bezel insert uh, a nice case not over polished ideally an original bracelet in good condition if you can find one um, these are really started to move up in price I mean it's was January 2018 when I'm filming this and I've noticed in the last two two and a bit years prices have really started to go up a lot you know um, I think over the long term they will continue to um, so it's getting harder and harder to find nice examples with, with original parts there's a lot of tatty ones around that people are asking a lot of money for I think with any vintage Rolex, you know, spend as much as you can afford and buy the best condition you can if you're going to keep it long term because it will look after you. Um, so, yeah, I think these watches will continue to to be collectible. You know, they stopped making this reference around about, I think, about 1980, 1979, 1980, somewhere at the very sort of end of the 70s. Um, so, you know, not uh, stop making them a long time ago. Demand is increasing. Supply is not. So I think, uh, yeah. Uh, I think they'll continue to get more and more expensive over the long term. Um, yeah, so I hope this guide helps you. Again, it's not exhaustive. It's not for experts. It's really just a simple guide for people that are perhaps looking at vintage Rolex sports models for the first time. And uh, yeah, hopefully uh, upload another video soon.